first of all, I have to thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I am a mental health counselor with TLC, and I see clients one on one. And I also uh, am I contribute to a a group called Way to Go W E I G H to Go for people who have problems with their weight. Um, and so every now and then I'll give a little talk as well. And um, um, my degrees are in, uh, I have a master's degree in counseling and another master's in clinical psychology. And I'm a certified hypnotist. So I can, uh, I can, hypno I can use hypnosis when it's appropriate as far as, uh, as my um, clients go. And uh, so we're talking about tapping into our mind's power and because of the fact that I've worked in this field for 50 years, I've seen a tremendous amount. I, I've seen a tremendous amount of, uh, of people who could, who could really, really help themselves and people who were ignorant about how to do it and just didn't understand. I want to make it very clear that um, I'm not in any way, it, when I'm talking about tapping into our mind's power, we have power to change our thinking. But I'm not in any way implying that uh, if we have symptoms that we should not see a physician, of course we should immediately not try to, to heal ourselves. Um, so I'm not, I'm not talking about that. Um, also, um, I, ha I have healed myself. From and several different uh, times, and I'll tell you about a couple of them. Um, but I'm in no way, I, I, in no way do I consider myself a healer of others. Um, I can use hypnosis, and if that if that works for them, uh, then that's wonderful. But uh, I but I have healed myself several times. Um, we have the power to change our thinking. Now it's not easy. It's difficult. Um, as a matter of fact, in the last four years, when people have come to me with their problems, and I have said, we can change that, we can change your thinking, um, and, and this is how we do it, and then I'll explain it, and I can't tell you how many times people have looked at me and said, that's too much work. So it's not, it's not very simplistic. It isn't really simple. And you have to be able to stick with it for a long time. Um, and and uh, we have the power to think of positive outcomes or negative outcomes. And sometimes when we're thinking of the negative outcomes, we don't even know it. I mean, people will tell me things and it's all negative and they're, they're not even aware of what they're doing. Uh, most people don't know how to use their own power. And uh, or often they, they don't even know that it exists. They don't know that they have power. Um, and we it's said that we have 70,000 thoughts a day. I just like to meet whoever counted them. I think that's I think I have no idea. how, But we have 70,000 thoughts a day. And if we don't change any of them, we think the same things every single day. And the more we do anything, the better we get at that, whatever it might be. If you came here, for example, and you saw the pickleball court and you'd never heard of it before and you had a really good teacher, then if you started today, a month from now, you would be a lot better at that. Um, and so whatever you do over and over, you get, you get good at. I had a lady who came in and she was anxious. She was a new client. And she was she was extremely anxious, she said. And I said, how long have you been anxious? She said, well, I'm just a nervous person, that's all. And I've been anxious for years. And I said, well, then you must be really good at it. And uh, she wasn't uh, very happy about that. But then I explained to her that what you do over and over and over, you get really good at. She was She was practicing anxiety. Everything that she thought she she was anxious about because of the way she was thinking. We had, a, we had to change that. She actually had very good self-esteem in some areas. And so I used that. And, uh, and one day she came in and she looked altogether different, totally different. She just was, she was happy. She was quiet. She, she wasn't worrying anymore, but she had to work really hard not to. 
and and we believe what we think, even if it's nonsense. Uh, we 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 believe it, uh, so we don't question what we're thinking. Whatever we think gets stronger. When we don't question it, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, many years ago, many years ago, I worked in an agency that had a great big workshop. And they um, they brought in all kinds of, of people with disabilities and people came in on the bus from the state hospital every day. And, uh, and my caseload was filled with people who were schizophrenic and schizoaffective disorders. And there was a there was a woman who was young and very pretty. She was anorexic and she was in the state hospital. This was in the 70s. So that was that was a long time. There were a lot of people in the state hospital that really didn't belong there. Um, and so she wanted to talk about the fact that she's having trouble getting a date. And and of course she was at, I wanted to talk about the anorexia and she didn't. Uh, and, and she was skeletal and she believed that she was fat. Her goal, in, as far as her weight went, was 75 pounds. That was her goal. She wasn't quite there, but she looked like a skeleton in a dress. And uh, she, the, the fact was that she was starving. And, and see, the, um, the anorexia had tremendous power. It was, it was uh, an example of what kind of power our thinking can have if it's not if it isn't normal, if it isn't natural, if it isn't good for us. But it had such tremendous power. I, I couldn't do anything with that. She wouldn't even talk about it. Wouldn't even talk about it. Uh, so our power, powerful, powerful minds can work for us or against us. But people believe what they think. Many, many years ago, 25 years ago, my husband died suddenly and without symptoms. And, uh, and, and he just had a massive stroke and died. And I was stuck up north in Michigan. And that year there were 122 inches, there was 122 inches of snow. And so I got really, really tired of that. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go to Clearwater because I had a, 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 two friends that lived there, a couple. And so I did, I flew to Clearwater and it was, uh, I didn't know anybody, just that couple. And, and Sundays, it seemed like Sundays were, it seemed like they were, you know, three days long. So this one Sunday, I decided to go to the library because I knew there would be people around me and I wouldn't be so lonely. So I went to the library, walked in the door and a man said to me in here, in here, we're almost ready to start. And he kind of pushed me into a room and there were about 50 people in the room. And so I, uh, I, I, I had no idea what it was. And so I went into the room and, uh, and he said, uh, they, it's, the, the speaker started to talk. They were selling insurance for people who were abducted by or, or impregnated or impregnated by aliens. And, and I, I couldn't believe it. I, it, it just didn't make it, it didn't make any sense at all. Uh, but that's, that's what it was. And so when they had a potty break, I left. Uh, I didn't expect that I'd be impregnated by an alien or, uh, or abducted. You know, I was too old to be impregnated anyway. So, um, so, but that's that's that the whole room was full of people who believed that. So, so it's easy to understand that we believe whatever we think. And um, the 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 anorexia, the anorexia, the, the poor girl was a victim of her own mind. Her mind was so um, strong. The thoughts were so strong that there was nothing that you couldn't really talk her out of it. A really good example of, of the power of our minds is a worrier. And I get, I've gotten a, quite a few worriers. Um, I, uh, a, a good definition of worrying is making up a whole lot of stuff that you don't want. Uh, and, uh, and a woman came to me and she was a chronic worrier. And, uh, and she was worried about something that was going to happen in six months. 
And, and I said, tell me everything you're worried about. And, and she did. And I said, did you just make all that stuff up? And, and she was a little offended. And, uh, and, and, but when she examined it, she had, uh, it's and, and worrying is really is really powerful uh, because of the fact that it's made up of its base is fear, and it's it's always um, it, it's always in the future. And if and I said to her, if you notice the future, we, we don't live in the future. The future never comes unless you can time travel, and and the past is past. That's why we call it that. So you only have the now. That's all you have is right now, the present moment. And if you're worried about the future, and if you're making up stories, and they're horror stories about the future, you're ruining the only time you have, which is now. And so finally, um, she, she understood that, that fear is such a powerful emotion. And so, and the more she made it up, the more she believed it. She, she got to the point where she really believed it. They did an interesting study that I read. They, what they did was they took uh, a lot of warriors and uh, they put them in a class of problem solving. And what they found was that warriors, chronic warriors, didn't problem solve well. Now, I don't know what the class consisted of because they didn't say. But they said that after they all took this class, um, that, that what, what happened is that 85% of their worries went away because they didn't think of it that way anymore. The worries weren't in charge. And, and uh, you know, people tell me, they, often people have said to me uh, that they worry about something so they'll be prepared when it happens. And I say, what a plan. I mean, they, they plan they're, they're talking about uh, something that's going to happen in the future, an event. What if it never happens? What if it never happens? And you have all this time that you're wasting in the present. Uh, and and the, when people who, who worry a lot, people who use their minds that way, they're, they're constantly practicing and they get really really good at it so that when when an event comes up they go immediately they they start to worry about it immediately they don't try to problem solve and the, and the, the you know the law of attraction if anybody believes in the law of attraction says that uh, never think about or talk about what you don't want think or talk about what you do want because that's that's very important because you're going to attract, if you talk constantly about what you don't want and what you're worried about, then uh, you know, you're going to attract that. I have to tell you a story. I never, never thought that I would see a spontaneous remission. I'd read books on it and I knew what it was, but I never thought I'd see it. And two years ago, before COVID, I was at a, at a, um, a luncheon with some ladies, there were about 10 people there. Lady next to me said to me, uh, can you hypnotize me not to smoke? And I said, well, if you don't wanna smoke, I, I could. Yeah, I could do that. So pretty soon the lady that was sitting across from me said to me, I'm in terrible chronic pain, horrible pain from a surgery and they can't do anything about it. I've had acupuncture, I've had all different kinds of things. And it, it, hurts. it hurts all the time, it hurts whenever I walk. It, it, uh, it's, it's awful. Could you hypnotize me? And I didn't know her. And I said, well, I can hypnotize you to do what you want to do. You want to be out of pain. Okay. And so uh, I said, come to my house. And so I, I made an appointment for her and I wrote the script. Whenever I hypnotize anybody, I write a script because I, I don't, I want them to record it on their phone. 
I don't want to make mistakes in, in what I'm saying. I want to include, every, I make sure that I include everything. Many, many years ago, when I was in hypnosis school, they told us that anytime we hypnotized anybody, it should never be less than 30 minutes. And what I found after I, after I got my certification and started doing hypnosis, what I found was that, that if, if I wanted people, if they recorded it, and then I wanted them to listen to it as many times as they could during that week before I saw them again. They wouldn't listen to it because it was too long. And they tell me, I don't know how many people told me that. So I, I, I shortened it to 15 minutes and have them record it. And then they'll listen to it two or three times a day. And then those ideas can go straight into the unconscious mind. And, and if, they, if they practice that, because you get better at whatever you practice. And so she came over to my house and I hypnotized her. And I didn't know exactly what to say because I didn't know her. And I said things in the hypnosis like, it's time to let go of the pain. It's time to let go. And you have the power to do that. And I said things like, um, you needn't struggle in any of this. This is quite simple. This is what you want. Um, and uh, so forth. When she came out of the hypnosis and she said, I don't have any pain. And I said, uh, I didn't think much of it because she was sitting there relaxed, of course. And, uh, and it was, you know, she, and, and I had put, I had done a relaxation exercise with her. She got up and she said, what do I owe you? And I said, what you owe me is to, to feel better, to get better, to have no pain. And she left. Two weeks later, she called me and she said, I have no pain. That was two years ago. I talked to her this week and she said, I have no pain. And so whatever she did inside her body, I have no idea what she did. But I, I suggested that she use the power of her mind in order to heal herself. And she was able to do that. And, um, and so I... I told her, as I tell everybody, um, if you improve, please take credit for that. Oh, please take credit for that. Don't give me credit for that. Take credit for it yourself, because that's really, really important. Your self-esteem will climb, and you'll feel confident. If you did it once, you can do it again. And the confidence just grows. And so that was, that was one of the uh, spontaneous re uh, remissions that I saw. Um, I, there was a, there was a man, there was a gentleman who came to me and he was anxious. And, uh, and so I used hypnosis and he said, I have pills for my anxiety and my PA gave them to me. And, and I said, uh, oh, that's wonderful. Did you take them? And he said, no, medicine doesn't work for me. And those pills don't work. I know they're not going to work. I've taken them. They don't work. And I said, well, they're not going to work because you don't believe they're going to work. And he said, well, how do I change? How do I change that? How do I, ch how do I change my mind? And I said, well, I said, uh, who gave them to you? And he told me his PA gave them to him, gave, gave me his name. And it's my PA. And I said, do you, do, what do you think of him? And he said, he's wonderful. He's just amazing. He knows so much. And I said, do you really think that he'd give you a pill that didn't work on purpose? And he said, no, no, I, I, I don't believe so. And I said, no, of course he wouldn't. So I said, you go home. And tomorrow after morning, when you get that, when you take that pill, you put that pill in your hand and you talk to that pill. And you tell that pill that it's going to work, absolutely going to work, that you're going to feel the effects of it almost immediately. So he left and I thought, you know, he doesn't have enough problems. So now I've got him talking to his pill. I, I don't, I didn't know what was going to happen, you know. So uh, he came back a week later and he said, it worked. And I said, you changed your mind. And it worked. Of course it worked because of the fact that you changed your mind. And then he had power. He felt that. And I use that word a lot. I use the word power a lot. Um, there, um, there was, I, I have one more story and it, it, it was, uh, I, I still 
I don't really understand it. What happened is that we used to have an office and it was in a church. And this lady came into my office and she wanted to talk about anxiety. And so we talked about anxiety for a whole hour. And um, she had a, a shirt on, she had a blouse on that had a, like a, a V-neck and I could see lesions. They were bright red and maybe, oh, a quarter of an inch high, strange looking little lesions on her chest. And she said, I see you're looking at my, at my lesion. She said, I've been to three different dermatologists. And she said, they don't know what it is. See my arms and she pulled up her sleeve and her arms were all like little scars. And I said, what are those from? And she said, well, they were all, they're all over me. She said, and the only thing they can do, the only thing they were able to do is to, to actually cut them out. And so I'm going to have to have these all cut out next week. I said, let's use hypnosis. Well, I've never been hypnotized. Eh, it's, it's okay. That's all right. All you have to do is shut your eyes. I said, you know, that's that's just close your eyes and listen to what I'm saying. And do you have a phone? Can we record this? And she said, yes. So she gave me her phone. And, uh, and we recorded it and she left. And I never thought she'd ever come back, but she wanted to come the next week. And when she did, all she had were little pink spots where these lesions had been. She somehow wanted them gone so badly. I mean, she just was so motivated to have them gone that she uh, she allowed the hypnosis to work and it, it took them all away. She didn't have to have surgery on any of them. So so it, it really, really depends. Um, uh, the one of the most important parts is that many, many years ago, when I was taking my ballet exams, ballet exams were difficult and they weren't written. <laughs> it was nothing like that. You had a big sign on your chest that said a number that had a number on it. And you uh, and the, the, all of the, uh, the people who were judging you, all the judges sat across from you at a big table and they'd say things like number 10, do a triple pirouette, pirouette on point. And you just hoped to God that you didn't fall on your face, you know? It was very frightening, it was very scary. So what I was 14, 15, 16 years old, what I used to do, what I, what I actually did was, was I would lie in bed and I would imagine doing what I knew was on that exam. And what happened was that when I'd get into the studio, I was better. And I realized that imagining it, made it better. And so uh, they've done a lot of, now they call it, they call it uh, rehearsal. And now they've done a lot of research on it. And they realized that, uh, that there were people who were in prison camps, for example. And, uh, and they, whenever they got out, they were, they, there were some people who used to be basketball players. And they said, what did you do in the prison camp? And they said, oh my God, it was so boring. And, and all I did was make baskets in my mind. And what they found with these people were that these people were much better at what they were doing before they went in by imagining it. That's a very, very big part of healing. Uh, if, if somebody wanted to heal themselves, imagining it, imagining it done, imagining what it would feel like, imagining and uh, I, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to, uh, to practice that uh, recently, but I have, uh, I have been able to, to help myself on many, many occasions. And the more, you, the, the more I did it, the more confidence I had. So I felt like I can make this a little bit better. It doesn't have to be this bad. Are there any books that you could recommend that um, would help us better understand um, what you've been talking about? Sure. Um, the uh, one book that uh, is really, really helpful is uh, You Are the Placebo, and it's by Dr. Joe Dispenza, D-I-S-P-E-N-Z-A. He healed himself. He was hit by a, by a, a, a a car and, and thrown 20 feet in the air and, and uh, severed and broke his spine in several places. And, and Joe Dispenza 
travels all over the world teaching people how to heal. Um, and and with the and he uses the placebo effect. There's a lot of really really good. Um, um, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of good studies in his book, and it's it's uh, it's not just his idea. It's you know it's verified. And another book is uh, by Kelly A. Turner, T U R N E R PhD. She's a PhD. It's called Radical Remission. Surviving Cancer Against All Odds. And she went all over the world studying people who were told that they only, their timeline was they only had a couple of weeks or a couple of months to live because they had stage four cancer. And they took it into their own hands and decided that they were going to heal. And, uh, and it's, it's interesting because of the fact that these were all different cultures and yet they did the same things in order to feel better, in order to heal. So it's a, it's a fascinating book, it really, really is. And it's very well documented. It's not just fantasy, she didn't just make it up, you know, it's, it's well documented. So those are two books. You, you mentioned um, when you do hypnotherapy with someone and you uh, tape the session, how often during a day or a week, would someone be re-listening or you know, um, listening to the session in order to get benefit? How much time do most people spend on this change within themselves? On average, they spend, I, I ask them to, um, to, to spend, to at least play it three times a day, and they do. The ones who, who are successful play it three times a day. Um, there was one girl who was getting up in the middle of the night and she was, eat, she was eating at 12 o'clock at night. And she was, she was coming to me because she wanted to lose weight. And uh, she, she was, uh, and, and she'd play it then. She'd play it at 12 o'clock at night instead of eating. And, and she came in to see us one day, uh, my, my colleague and I, and we didn't know who she was. She had lost so much weight. She was so beautiful. Uh, and so that's what, that's how she used it. 